Hey guys, Matt here. Before we begin this episode of The Obsessive Viewer, I just want to mention that we are currently running a contest where you can win a free Obsessive Viewer t-shirt. The contest runs from now until January 1st, and if you want to enter, all you have to do is leave a rating and review of the podcast on iTunes or on Stitcher. Then you need to take a screenshot of the review and email it to matt at obsessiveviewer.com with the subject line Obsessive Viewer T-Shirt Contest. On January 1st, I'll randomly select a winner from the entries and we'll get a free t-shirt mailed to them. We'll be accepting entries until December 31st at midnight, so make sure you get the email in before then. Thank you guys for listening and enjoy this week's episode of The Obsessive Viewer. This is Matt Hurt at Obsessive Viewer on Twitter, and this is ObsessiveViewer.com's The Obsessive Viewer Podcast. Hello and welcome to The Obsessive Viewer. We're a weekly movie and TV podcast that covers a specific topic via genre, trope, movie, or show each episode. You can find more of our work at obsessiveviewer.com as well as more of our podcasting at obsessiveviewer.com slash podcasts. You can also like us on Facebook and join the Facebook group at facebook.com slash theobsessiveviewer. And this week on the podcast, we are sponsored, of course, by our friends over at Horror Movie Yearbook, which is a uh, horror-centric movie podcast that takes a... Uh, a few horror movies from a specific year and discusses them and reviews them in the context of the current events and pop culture of the year they were released. You can find that at HM Yearbook on Twitter and at HorrorMovieYearbook.com. And thank you to Horror Movie Yearbook and the fine folks at Midwest Podcast Network for sponsoring this episode once again for us. And today on the podcast, we are doubling up reviews. So we're going to be reviewing... um, the latest uh, DC EU uh, movie, Justice League, as well as the latest Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, Thor Ragnarok. And to review those movies today with me is frequent, frequent, frequent guest, Mr. Robert Feck is fresh from Cancun. Do I look tan? You do. You do look tan. Uh, thank you. Thank you. you yeah. Know, yeah. I worked on it. Nice. By passing out drunkenly on the beach. Well, there you go. Worked that out. is. That is good. Uh, how was Cancun? It was beautiful. Good. The beach was lovely. Got some boogie boarding in. Woke up every nice. morning, went to the gym, and then down about five mimosas before hitting the beach. So, God, that's awesome. It was fantastic. Nice. And now I'm back here, and it snowed today. So, It snowed today? Yeah. Did it really? It did. Not here? like not like bad. Like but, flurries? Or... Yeah, flurries. Really? Yeah. Wow. You can tell that I work from home and yeah. never leave my apartment. It's cold outside. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, uh, I just feel like that just exposed me as being like like a very like open the blinds. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> like very. Yeah, I I bathe, guys. <laughs> Trust me, I bathe. <laughs> but yeah, well, that's great. I'm glad glad to have you back. Also, I didn't ask you this before we started recording, but uh, Harry Potter reading. Where are you at on that? I, I keep am... pestering you about that. Well, I planned to do a little bit more reading than I did in Cancun, Mm -hmm. but with boogie boarding and Mm -hmm. drinking and Mm -hmm. floating beer pong, Mm -hmm. not a lot of reading got done, but I am on book seven, about 100 pages in book seven. Nice. Nice. And then after that, are you still going to start? Yes. Then I will begin The Dark Tower. Yes. And then we will be reviewing it on Tower Junkies, which is a podcast devoted to Stephen King and his magnum up as The Dark Tower, which you can find at towerjunkiespod.com. It is also presented by obsessiveviewer.com. So anyway, um, yeah, so uh, we do news sections, <laughs> but anymore, those are depressing. Um, last time you were on the last previous episode of the podcast, we did Blade Runner 2049. 2049. Yeah. And uh, we talked about... Harvey Weinstein and uh, Kevin, Kevin Spacey. Spacey. And then in the time since that, we recorded that Halloween night. And then the 21 days since then, 22 days since then, so many more things have come right. up. And I believe we are going to do a standalone episode all about all of that. But I do want to just mention, because there's, there's been a ton, Charlie Rose, Louis C.K., 
um, Jeffrey Tambor. Yeah, so that many. One. Yeah. That. Yeah. And uh, we'll talk more in depth about that in the in the standard episode. But one that kind of bummed me out uh, pretty hard was uh, today it was announced that uh, John Lasseter uh, had some allegations leveled against him. And he actually um, is taking a leave of absence from his work. He's the uh, he's in charge of Pixar. He's one of the founding members of Pixar and he's um, one of the creative heads of Walt Disney Animation and Pixar. Uh, Disney Pixar and his the details of the allegations are that he's that he is a hugger but and it seems like the media is kind of reporting it as oh he's just he just hugs a lot of women and he's that's not necessarily what the actual allegations are because it's hugging and like and like kind of not forcing kisses but like kind of from the sound of it like kissing with like just greetings that's very uncomfortable and you know that kind of remind me of do you remember when john travolta was like being awkwardly uh kissy and huggy on an award show i vaguely remember that that's that kind of is what that reminds me of yeah that oh, and then also the allegations of him basically like putting his hand on on women's thighs yeah, and like stuff like that and it seems like the media is kind of just saying like oh he hugs a lot um, so that's that's disconcerting, also. But he is taking a leave of absence from from his work. And one thing that I do, not necessarily to play devil's advocate, but one one kind of, I don't even know if I'd say bright side because it's all a dark and terrible thing. Um, that's great that it's all coming to light, obviously. But it's just, it's a bummer that Pixar that like <laughs> this is at Pixar. Like Pixar is like it pisses me off because. Pixar is like the at least for me it's like it's my Pixar movies are like my go to like feel good movies. Well, it doesn't take anything yeah. away from the Pixar movies and itself, it, and it doesn't. And it shouldn't. It doesn't, and it, and it definitely doesn't. I'm just saying that it's just I kind of hold that studio to a higher standard, and I would think well, I got that, news for you. Know, Pixar employs hundreds, maybe even a thousand so employees. Chances are there's one or two pieces of shit amongst them. No, they need to all be like very super happy and friendly and and good people, please. <laughs> <laughs> but uh that's just that's just kind of a downer on that. But um one kind of like I was saying, the kind of one of the I wouldn't even say bright sides, but between this uh his statement and even like Louis CK's statement, which we'll talk about in in a coming episode, but it's refreshing or encouraging uh, encouraging is the word i would say that they're not dismissing the allegations in their statements they're not saying like like they're not they're not um denying it or anything like john lasseter said that he just uh he uh, well, uh his misconduct or um he 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 used a word that didn't necessarily say like, Oh, I didn't do these things. It's just that he is, he's, he's apologetic and everything. And it's, it's something that he's, that he's taking time to, he's going to evaluate. Of. Yeah. Yeah. Taking ownership of, and then Louis CK even was like, Hey, yeah, these stories are true. And like, it doesn't excuse the behavior at all, no, but, but it is. Least, no, I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's, it's nice to at least, them not taking the politician route because right. politicians are like, oh, it doesn't happen. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. At least they're, you know, the bright, small bright point is right. they're owning it and you know, hopefully hopefully there can be some institutional changes made in the, the industry. So Yeah. I'd, I would uh, certainly hope so. And the fact that all of these keep coming up and they're all being reported on and uh, taken seriously – at least from uh, from a public standpoint, um, is encouraging. The only person that be. I've seen, and again, allegations by no means make right. it fact, but the only person that really hasn't taken no ownership or at least commented that, you know, maybe this is true, was George Takei. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, that bummed me out, too. Yeah, and but again, yeah, again, again it's, it's allegations. Allegations is not yeah proof, right? And so not to say that it didn't happen, but mm -hmm. we can't automatically go to condemnation, condemnation right. over somebody over an allegation. Sometimes yes. allegations are false, mm -hmm. 
it needs to be investigated or looked at further. So Right. Innocent until proven guilty. True. Yes. Hopefully. These yes. are their stories. Yeah. <laughs> dun dun. <laughs> no, but yeah, and, and I agree. It's just it just bummed me out that the allegations in general were levied against people that I respect a lot. Sure. And it's it's a bummer. It is. Yeah. It's very sad. Yep. But we'll talk more about that um in in the uh in upcoming episodes in an upcoming episode and we will uh discuss that in more depth and more detail. But I do I do want to mention just real quick that I did notice that one of the one of the other people that are actually like actively I don't know if I don't know if he actively denied the allegations against himself or he was just the ones that one that was speaking out against the kind of the the uh, reaction to people and saying like well you know some allegations could be false and everything one of the people that like stated that publicly was Jeremy Piven which I feel like is not the guy that you want no. to do like because. I mean, even even when we had um, back on the first indie popcon, when we had uh, Chick McGee on the podcast on the podcaster stage, like he told an anecdote about Jeremy Piven's, like, yeah, he's just he's just an a hole, <laughs> <laughs> and like Jeremy Piven just he that's that's how like I just I can't see him and think like yeah he 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 should have at least some self awareness and be like maybe I should just stay out of this conversation yeah exactly. Like he's but, not even really relevant right, right. now. So. He did have some allegations against him. So Jeremy him, Piven? Yeah. I can't say I'm That's shocked not by a that. shock at yeah. all. Yeah. Ugh. But it's just like really, like you're gonna play that you're Jeremy Piven and you're gonna play that card. Right. It's like, <laughs> like let's just sit, come sit down on. there, Jeremy. Yeah. Ugh. I can only think of like one thing I've ever actually thought. You know, he did a good job in, and yeah, it's smoking um, aces. Oh, interesting. I thought you were going to say, um, oh, God. That, PCU? Yeah, PCU. That was a forgettable sure. uh, attempt at Animal House. I, okay, fair, fair. Um, listen to our college movies episode in episode 101. Of the I believe I was on that. Yes, you were. Podcast, oh, so. yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we'll, again, we'll talk more about that. Uh, in an upcoming episode, but it's all more stuff. It's becoming routine at this point. Like, Hey, well, it's, and we just said this off the air, but Mm. we almost expect before we record the episode that we're going to discuss it. There's going to be somebody else that has allegations alleged against them. So absolutely. It's just, I'd be shocked if there weren't at this point. Yeah. Same here. Um, it's an odd pause. Yeah, it, it was. Now I need to keep it in. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyway, so we're here today to talk about Justice League and Thor Ragnarok. Um, now, Fekus, since you're the guest, which one do you want to talk about first? Uh, let's go with chronological and start with Thor. Okay. Um, okay, so Thor That's Ragnarok. clearly not the way you wanted that to go. I don't know. I, well, I mean... Yeah, I mean that's that's yeah. <laughs> it's been a couple weeks since I saw Thor Ragnarok, and of course we'll do spoiler, non spoiler. So we'll go non spoiler first. Um, and so yeah, Thor Ragnarok is the latest from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and um, directed by uh, um, oh, I can't remember how to pronounce his name. Yeah, don't ask me. I don't. Uh, YTT. Um, his last name's YTT, but anyway, um. And this is a movie that I was very much looking forward to, and it did not disappoint at all. Like it was, I I loved it. What What did you think of Thor Ragnarok? How did How did you see it? How was the? the I saw it in a movie theater. Oh, it was terrible. Hated it. Every every (laughs) second of it. No, I. This was so much fun. This was one of the most fun outings since the uh, first gardens of the galaxy for me it was Mm -hmm. it was just a blast and like you i've I've been looking forward to this since the first trailer and i you know it's one of those movies you just walk out with a giant smile on your face so no it was it was great everything i expected and more or hope for more yeah same here and uh and yeah it's a taika waititi Mm -hmm. is his name um who is famous for uh, I believe Flight of the Concords and some other comedy. Oh, uh, what we do in the shadows. I never saw it. Oh, really? It's, it's really good. Um, it's, it's really good. 
Um, he also did Hunt for the Wilder People. Did you ever see that? I have no idea what that is. It was, I want to say it came out a while, or came out last year. Um, a lot of people were pretty, pretty big on it. Um, it got a lot of, uh, kind of awards buzz. Hmm. Yeah. Surprised about that. Yeah. I, I believe that it is on Hulu, so I'll be checking it out, uh, soon. So anyway, um, yeah, Thor Ragnarok, it, ah, man. Okay. So I, First of all, I have to just say this. Before I went to the theater, uh, or when I went into the theater, I posted on the Facebook page my check-in that I was seeing Thor Ragnarok, and my comment was, I hope that this Thor Ragnaroks, <laughs> um, which it did. I mean, it was... It was so... It was... It's uh, too bad that you're not famous enough to have that on a, like, a preview. Like, obsessive viewer Matt Hurt oh, says, yeah. Thor Ragnarok my socks off that's yeah that's true someday 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 I know. we'll have we'll have we'll have pull quotes for the dvds and stuff yeah but anyway um no it was it was a blast um with with the thor universe like i like thor and thor the dark world i wasn't a huge fan of thor the dark world i thought thor was was pretty good i had good comedic timing thor ragnarok just blew it out of the water in terms of oh, comedy yeah. and everything like, of course i uh, i've been a defender of you have the, been. the first two and prior to seeing ragnarok i went back and rewatched it and man the dark world's rough really yeah like i there okay. were still there were still parts that i enjoyed like mm-hmm. a, like most of the loki stuff is good but man malekith is one of the worst villains in any superhero film. He's just so forgettable. And Mm. you just cut, you're like, why? I mean, like that, the whole point of the dark world is for them to introduce a new infinity stone. Yeah. And so they just kind of threw some, I I don't even know if Malekith is a, is a villain from the actual comics. I'm sure he is. I'm not familiar with Thor all that much, but man, it, I still find enjoyment out of the movie, sure, but it's it does not hold up as well. The original Thor, I still thoroughly enjoyed. Yeah. So. Yeah, I still really like the original Thor. Um, but yeah, but yeah, to go back to Thor Ragnarok, and I'm I'm glad that you're seeing the light on the dark world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm because you were you were very like adamantly. Uh, a yeah, defender. and I'm, I, I'm not gonna say I dislike the movie because I still, like I said, there's sure. still things I enjoy about the film. Uh, it's got one of my favorite cameos uh, from one of the other Avengers, and that's when Loki oh, turns yes. into Captain America. Yeah, but <laughs> that was good. Yeah, it's just it. There's a lot of flat, uh, just flat movie in that. Sure, absolutely. Um, and I still like the way that it. The at that point in Agents of Shield, they were they had to like tie in like oh yeah yeah they had to tie in with Yaunish from uh, Ghostbusters two he was the he was the character tie in oh on that okay episode. sure he he was a Asgardian that was he was on Earth and he was mm. a professor or something like that so okay yeah I just I just remember that in Agents of Shield like they had the big crossover thing with uh captain america the winter soldier and uh, how that yeah like it was pivotal to the plot of agents of shield and right. then thor ragnarok or thor the dark world starts with like the, the episode after that just starts with like oh we gotta clean up this right <laughs> it's like all right um well, that happened We're yeah. here now. um so with thor ragnarok um the one of the things in all the Thor movies really that in really the Marvel cinematic universe, like I've, I don't, I won't say that I dislike Loki or anything, but I just feel like I don't, I don't get the love for Loki. Oh like, really? Yeah. I, oh, it's man. like, he's, he's such a good character. I, I mean, in my opinion, I, I think he's, I, I think he's really well fleshed out. Mm-hmm. I think Tom Hiddleston is, brilliant as loki i think he's brings a lot of just not death but 
Energy. Energy, yeah, energy. Yeah. That's a good word for it. Yeah, he brings a lot of energy to that character and he's a lot he's always fun on screen. He's mm-hmm. he, you're, you're drawn to him on the screen. So it And you know, it's funny because I agree with that wholeheartedly. Like I agree that he's like he's a blast to watch. I just I think that part of my disconnect with that character is that he was like the villain in the Avengers and I mean, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is very notable for not having very well well done villains. So it's like, I think maybe my disconnect with Loki is that he's kind of the one at this point. I mean, there are multiple villains that are that are pretty well drawn. None that I can really think of off the top of my head, but uh, but he's he's like the one the lone standout. So it kind of feels like. I don't know how I don't I don't I don't know I don't know yeah, what my yeah. disconnect is. I, I don't I don't I don't get it. I, I think he's. Yeah. I, I've and I've heard that argument made before by people mm-hmm. saying that. But it shouldn't connect. Like for me, and this is me trying to make sense of my own Inapolis. ramblings. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, but it's like I like that is a statement of fact. Yes, the most of the most of the villains are are pretty one uh like pretty forgettable forgettable but loki stands out so like why does that make me have a disconnect with the character of loki like i yeah, don't it, you would think it'd be it, the opposite yeah but i think it just reminds me that hey they got it right once um but i, I, I argue they got it right again with uh vulture oh yeah that's true that's true i thought he, he was one of the strongest villains in the MCU, by far. That's true. That's that's true. Yeah, that's fair. But I don't know. Tom Hiddleston's great. Um, he is. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah. And you know, a lot of the a lot of the character comes from the actors that play it. Like mm-hmm. Michael Keaton was was amazing as yeah. uh, Vulture. Vulture. The his actual names slip in my mind. Oh yeah. Um, mm. But Tom Hiddleston brings so much life to uh, Loki as well. So. Mm. Yeah, a lot of that is attributed to the actor playing the role. Yeah, and I think Tom Hiddleston's iconic at this point as Loki, and I just mm-hmm. I love seeing him on screen. And it's it's funny because at this point Loki's he yeah he's a villain, but he's he's kind of not a good guy per no. se, but maybe a uh, relatable character. Yeah, but when you think about it. He's a mass murderer, right? Because like one, you know, one of the lines in uh, Avengers is Black Widow's like he's killed eighty two people in three days. Jesus, so, I forgot about that line. But, but now, now we're like, yeah, it's Loki. Yeah. I'm so happy to see Loki. Oh, and they're they're <laughs> they're fighting together now, right? Yay, Loki, and you know, there's eighty two families on Earth, and they're like, fuck that guy, <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, that's true. That's maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. Yeah, I, there it is. I can't it's your connect. Moral with him. standpoint. Though. Yeah, but what did you think of? Uh, was it Kate Blanchett as? Yeah. Oh, first of name? all, what was her name? Uh, Hella. Hella. Yeah. Um, I thought she was a lot of fun mm. as, as the role. I I thought, you know, it's odd seeing Kate Blanchett in kind of a, a a role like that. I didn't recognize her until the credits, honestly. Did, wait, did you not know that was Kate I didn't, Blanchett? I didn't know. I didn't. I. I mean, did you never see a preview for Thor Ragnarok when they're like Kate Blanchett? Um, I did, but with the previews for with the previews anymore, I've, I'm kind of pushing them out of my mind a little bit. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and I kind of didn't really stay too clued into the. I think it was I forgot who was playing who was playing her, and then by the time the end credits, I was like, oh, oh shit, I didn't yeah. recognize her. She she was a lot of fun. I thought she mm-hmm. she portrayed a very kind of strong badass woman villain mm-hmm. and I thought it came across well on screen. Yeah, me too. Me too. And I liked the 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 power that she wielded. Yeah, I did, was... I did too. Like she was very formidable formidable. Absolutely. Uh, so I I really thought that that came across well on screen. Mm-hmm. And, and her motivation in like the I don't want to spoil it or anything. We'll save that for spoilers, yeah. but the connection like the her her motivation and connection that she has with with uh, um, the entirety of of Asgard, uh, was pretty compelling. Yeah, I agree. I uh, and, and you know that's kind of the other disconnect you have with some of the villains. In the MCU mm-hmm. is, is like their motivations are sometimes like 
okay, okay, kind right. of. But no, I, I agree with you with Hella. Like, I, I wish you could have seen the fleshed out uh, family history with her mm-hmm. and Odin. But it for the little time they had on screen to show you, I thought it really resonated well. Yeah, absolutely. Um. So the the comedy aspects of it and and the Hulk in it, um, man, the Hulk was fantastic. He really was in the interplay between him and him and him and Thor. Thor. Oh, it was fan. It was, it was great. So great. It, I, I'm glad to see Hulk. Like it, it wasn't Hulk's movie, but mm-hmm. see him not just as a uh, hey, we're gonna go throw the Hulk at. Uh, at a battle and right. So Hulk was actually a character and it wasn't mm-hmm. just Bruce Banner, but it was, it was Hulk as a character. Yeah. So I really enjoyed seeing, seeing that aspect and I, the, the play between him and just about every character on screen, I thought was fantastic. Absolutely. And that first like arena battle thing. Oh man, that was so good. Incredible for something that was, um, very prominent, like, like uh, prominent in the trailers, right? Something that like, I, I had months. Like I expected, I expected it to be good, but I also expected it to not venture that much further from what I saw in the trailers. But man, that was a great fight scene. It really was. It was a. It was just a blast. Yeah, like I thought it was brilliant that they that they put that put what they did in the trailer because like that that got us kind of primed for it. That that we had months to kind of build right. it up in our heads, and it did not disappoint. It was. Such a blast that, and then cutting, cutting between that to, uh, to Loki. It, oh, was that's, like, that's how it feels. So oh, great. I was dying that with was that so line. Great. It was amazing. <laughs> oh, I loved it so much. Um, yeah, that, and then just the just the journey that they go through is just it's such a blast. It, they're, yeah, they're such a inter- They're such an interesting pair, and God, I like Chris Hemsworth. I. Like he has such amazing comedic timing. He really does. He for, was for a guy that you, you know, Chris Hemsworth. He's a big, bulky, yeah, uh, fella that's action oriented at times. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he's he's like a really good comedy presence. Oh, on screen. absolutely. Like the uh, <laughs> scene. Oh my god! Probably my favorite like scene and line of the movie was where he's talking about he's he's remembering he's sharing a memory that he has of him and of him and uh, um, Loki. He's he's just like um, he's just like so so I saw a snake and and I went to go pick up the snake and and uh, because because Loki knows that I love snakes, um, so I went to admire the snake and then he and then he turned into Loki and he's like oh it's me it's it's Loki and then he stabbed me. Yeah. We were seven. <laughs> it's like just that, that was just so beautiful. Um, <laughs> oh God. Yeah. So that makes me want Chris Hemsworth to do more like comedy roles. Oh yeah. yeah. It's yeah. The, well, the one comedy role I remember him before that was in the remake of vacation. Yeah. Was, yeah. And that was unfortunate, but it was, but I will say that that, I mean that movie for as shitty as it was, his, his scenes in it were pretty, yeah, all right. pretty good. Um, I remember what was he, <laughs> This is such a stupid joke, but his character in Vacation kept making references to faucets, um, I just can't completely remember. random. Like he would say, like I don't remember what it was, but it was like like it was a recurring gag. But anyway, this isn't Vacation. So, um, how about the uh, you're you're back from Cancun, so let's stop talking about oh. Vacation. <laughs> how about the okay, so yeah, the, the scene uh, where? Odin is watching the recreation of Loki's death on on the stage. Yes. So I, okay. So I want to see. It with, let's. You want to say that? Yeah. Let's okay. save that for spoilers right. okay. because that 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 was that was awesome. Um. And let's let's kind of go into spoilers here in just a second. What else can we say? In the, oh, well, Tessa the, Thompson. Oh, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I I real I I don't think I've ever really seen her in anything else. But I yeah. thought she she nailed Valkyrie. I want to see that character further in the MCU. So I'm hoping she pops up in, uh, either Ga- guardians three or, mm. uh, Avengers. So, yeah. No, I, I really dug her character and I love Same the backstory of the Valkyries. Oh yeah. I it's thought, very fascinating. Really? Like, a really good wrinkle to put into the Asgard lore. Right. So no, I, I, I really enjoyed that. 
Uh, do you want there were Do you want to save like some a couple plot holes for like spoilers? Yeah, because we'll go into spoilers here in okay. just a second. I think I have one more thing. Yeah, I got nothing. Oh, well, Tessa Thompson was in uh, uh, Westworld and Creed. oh, that's right, she was in Westworld, wasn't she? Yep. Okay. Well, how about uh, the character that the director played? Yes. Oh my God. That oh, what was his name? Was I it Doug? No, Doug was the guy Doug that died the guy. by those the yeah. champion that went out. And speaking of Doug, like my That's favorite right. line of his was he goes, Yeah, Doug went to challenge him and Doug's no longer here. <laughs> what are you gonna do? I'm gonna go challenge him. Okay. Bye, new bye Doug. New Doug. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. I, I loved oh my god, that was so that was beautiful that was no, just, like every scene he was in was so was fantastic. just gold like perfect timing like just that dry uh that dry sense of humor and that dry delivery just knocked it out of the park Absolutely. every time so great and i really want i think that there's a funko pop of him i really want oh that. god if there is i have to get yeah. it yeah 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 that that'll be a good one. Oh yeah um so yeah so let's let's go into spoilers for for thor ragnarok um yeah so here's a clip from the trailer we're going to go into spoilers if you haven't seen it uh skip skip ahead with the sh- with the show notes um the timestamps. um just go see it you can go see it yes go see thor ragnarok if you can't and you want to listen to our review of justice league skip ahead in the with the show notes with the timestamps. it's so, main event time He's a friend from work. Oh, come on. Okay, and we are spoilers on for Thor Ragnarok. Um, so where do you want to start? The for, the scene with the play. Okay, so I went to go <laughs> see it with my wife, mm-hmm. and she she's like nudging me. He's like, it's Matt Damon. I was like, no. She's like, that's Matt Damon. I swear that's Matt Damon. I'm like, there's no way that's Matt Damon. <laughs> and Matt Damon was the person that was playing Thor. Yep. Er, was or Thor was or was he playing Loki? I think he was playing Loki. He was playing Loki. Yes, because Thor was played by um, uh, one of the other Hemsworths. No, oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, the the other brother that nobody's ever heard of. Yeah. Uh, is it Liam Hemsworth? No, Liam's no. the uh, Hunger Games. One. Okay, it's Luke Hemsworth. Luke Hem. Okay, so he was basically uh, Thor was played by Westworld Hemsworth. Yes, and not Hunger Games Hemsworth. <laughs> That's. <laughs> but and I, I was sure she was wrong. I was like, surely <laughs> it's like, yeah, he kind of looks like Matt Damon. Mm. And by by the end of it, just like I'm waiting through the credits, I'm like, it's not there, right? It's not because it's uncredited, <laughs> right? And then I, I get on IMDb when I get home, and I'm like, fuck it, she was right. <laughs> I was, so I was like, well done. Yeah, I was like, guys, look, it kind of looks like Matt Damon. <laughs> and I, it was Sam Neill that was played yes. Owen, which I didn't catch until I was. I didn't catch reading, that either yeah. until I saw the credits. But no, that I, that whole scene was fantastic. It was amazing. Oh yeah, that. Just uh, it, I don't know. Like I just love it. I having the those cameos um in particular is just freaking brilliant. Right, and just um, out of nowhere too. Yeah. Oh yeah, out of nowhere, and then just showing like that's how you get back into the what's what's uh, revealed in in Thor: The Dark World that Loki is kind of taking the place of Odin. Right. Um, that's just such a brilliant way to bring us in, bring us back into that in a funny and, and hilarious way. Uh, and speaking of the other cameo with the Dr. Strange stuff. Oh yeah. I loved it. I thought, Me too. I thought it was a great little, uh, little shove in for mm-hmm. a character we've just been introduced to a year ago and having him kind of have a small role in it. Mm-hmm. So I, I was a really big fan of those scenes, especially with the comedy stuff with him like switching areas real yes. quick and having Thor trip and fall over himself. Mm-hmm. No, I, I was a pretty big fan of the I, Dr. Strange stuff. I liked that a lot. I kind of, well, in the moment I was kind of wishing that Dr. Strange had a bigger role in it. Cause I was kind of expecting him to have somewhat of a bigger role. I, I see that's about the same size of role. I was expecting Dr. Really? Strange to have. Yeah. Okay. Well, but the, by the end of it, like he didn't, 
he he wouldn't have fit in right. any more. Like well, as the optimum. They do that a lot in the, in comic books anyway, where they'll oh, yeah. they'll have a small role for a character that usually has nothing to do with that particular book, mm-hmm. and he's in and out real quick for just plot purposes. And so, okay. I I I appreciated that that okay. scenario, and I and I loved with Loki's like I've been falling for thirty minutes. <laughs> That was great. Oh, God, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I, I forgot about that line because uh, it's been a few weeks. But the, yeah, that that was, I, I enjoyed that uh, cameo there. And then, so plot holes. So, well, one of the complaints I've seen people made is like, well, if Hell is so powerful, how come she all of a sudden decides to show up? As, I was like, well, I, I kind of think. Kind of took it as Odin before him dying was kind of holding that kind of power back, or at least keeping her at bay. Yeah, I thought I felt like that was kind right. of implicitly stated. Right. In but the movie. people was like, also, she's gonna show up. Why wouldn't she just show up uh, in Asgard? I'm like, well, she's there to take away the threat, right, of Thor. So I, 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 did, I really didn't see that as a plot hole or, no. or a reason to complain about anything. Huh. Yeah, that I mean that seems nitpicking at I, best, I, right? That's what or, I thought too, or a completely inaccurate read of it. Because, yeah, because I, I, mean, I feel like because Odin pretty much says before he dies is like the only reason she hasn't come back is because I've been holding her at bay, I've right? Been holding her power at bay. So I don't know how people really thought that as a as a plot hole. Yeah, or I, I, I didn't get it. No, me neither. The huh. the biggest plot hole that I'll, I'll somewhat give credence to would be the. Uh, People say that you're never really told why Hulk is, uh, uh, why he's there, right? Okay, which I kind of get, but that's fair. It is fair, and people are like, "Well, you know, the Quinjet couldn't have made it in space." It's like, well, I, I never thought the Quinjet made it into space. Right. My understanding was that you know they show on on the world that the uh, Grand Masters occupying that there's all these portals or wormholes from other worlds mm-hmm. depositing onto the planet. And I just right. kind of was under the assumption that there was one of these uh, holes or rifts in the universe on Earth that caused uh, Hulk in the Quinjet to be taken. And that's yeah. when Valkyrie found Hulk. Yeah, so that was that was my kind of, and they don't explain it very well in the in the movie. I didn't mm-hmm. think, but that was just kind of what I inferred from the information that was given. Same here, and it's kind of it's a moot point because I wouldn't say, like anyone that I don't know. I I can't I can't buy into anyone saying like, oh, it doesn't make sense that he made it there because I mean it follows it follows the logic of the of the MCU. The last we saw of Hulk, he was leaving. Right. So yeah. It's not like they just shoehorned him into a Thor movie. Sure. It made sense that he was somewhere else other than and Earth. How much scientific explanation or right. you know, plot exposition do we really need? We we got Hulk and yeah. on a new on a different planet fighting Thor. Yeah. I, I don't need the Dickensian method right. as to why it happened. It happened, yeah. it was a lot of fun, and we kind of got a, a Throw throw away. Well, this is probably how it happened. Right, I'm that, fine with that. And that seems like it's in keeping with the way it's in comic books. Like, yeah, you'll have right. crossover stuff. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah, this character goes here. Fuck it. He's just because. Yeah, he's here. Who cares? Right, deal with it. Yeah, just just like Loki, just kind of all, all of a sudden at right. Grand Masters Arena is like, I've been here for like three weeks. Where have you been? Yeah. So and there they, there's a throwaway line. It's like, well, you know, wormholes and time and difference and yeah. stuff and th- things <laughs> and stuff like that. What did you think of the Grandmaster and Jeff Goldblum? Oh man, he was for, well. First of all, he was Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, but he was <laughs> so much fun. He was. He, he was a blast. I no, I, I loved every scene he was in. So same here. It, so it, it was nothing extraordinary for Jeff Goldblum, right? Because he played Jeff Goldblum, but yeah. no, he was a lot of fun. I I agree, and uh, I have a friend who. Hates Jeff Goldblum. Man, I like, don't know how you can hate Jeff and Goldblum. I don't know how either. I really don't know how either. Uh, all my energy is going into not asking. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's and I mean he was he was great and yeah. Like I'll, I'll, it, every interaction Jeff Goldblum had with any any of the characters was just mm-hmm. was fantastic. It was fun. It was stupid and yeah. it it was good stuff. Yeah. And Carl Urban also. 
as Scourge. Yeah. Uh, Again, I kind of didn't recognize him. I didn't. I wasn't. Well, I, was in the o- movie. only because I knew who I, I knew he was playing uh, Scourge in the movie. So I, mm-hmm. I mean, he's Scourge a comic character. Or? He's he's in Thor. I'm not that familiar with mm-hmm. the character because I've, I've I never read Thor. Okay, but I. I liked his character. I, I liked, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he had some good scenes, especially at the start, yeah. at the very beginning, uh, yeah. with the with the girls and the Bifrost. I thought that was mm-hmm. a lot of fun. That was awesome. And I, you know, I kind of enjoyed his turn at the end as to trying to redeem his uh, yeah horribleness. Obviously, pretty expected and standard. Sure, but sure. It was a, it was well it was, done. Right. So yeah. uh, I, apparently that w- that's something that happens in the comic books. Oh, at some okay. point too, where he kind of sac- makes a sacrifice to mm-hmm. help Thor, maybe even an uh, escape okay. of citizens of Asgard. I don't know. Hmm. Like I said, not that familiar, but no, I, he hmm. was he was good. Hmm. You know, I, I enjoyed his scenes. Nice. Um, <laughs> Idris Elba was great. Of course he was. Uh, yeah. He was. Uh, it's great to see him in an action role. <laughs> 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 no, it was funny because I. I my friend that I go see movies with, um, when we saw that, uh, she can nudge me and was like, hey, wasn't he in that one movie? Like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Get the fuck out right, right. now. But, uh, but yeah. It, it, I could have done with more Idris Elba. Me too. Always. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he, the scenes he, were, he was in, he, he, mm. was, he was great. He, I mean, he could have been in 93 minutes of the movie. <laughs> I would have wanted more. <laughs> or 95 minutes. <laughs> Was it, it was 95 or 95. was it 95? it 95 okay i thought it was 93 no it was 95 jesus christ anyway um the action oh man the the action set pieces were, were fantastic like mm-hmm. the over the top just grand in scale i it, it was a lot of fun so i i love the wolf yes yeah so oh, yeah the the wolf versus the hulk Scenes it's on the Bifrost was great. Yeah, I loved him falling from the. Oh um, yeah, that was that, so that was gr- that was fantastic. So awesome. Oh uh, yeah, that that was great. And then uh, also that opening, that opening. Oh, the opening fight scene between yeah. uh, Thor and I, I forget the name of the <clears throat> yeah the bad guy, but and I liked how he came into play later in the movie. Me too. Me too. Um, I do you notice? Uh, it's, it's jumping around a bit, but mm-hmm. when Hela's going through the uh, trophy room or the armory and she's, you know, mm. saying, oh, that's stupid or that's... I like how she pushes over the uh, the, gauntlet the gauntlet and is like, yeah. oh, fake. I'm like, thank God. Because <clears throat> right. everyone's, for, since the start or since the original Thor, people have been like, well, the, oh, the yeah. Infinity Gauntlet's in the, in the armory. Why, why does Thanos have it? <laughs> and so I, I kind of ha- like how the, they're like, hey, here you go. It's fake. Nice. Yeah, I I'd, I'd forgotten about that from the first Thor movie. Um that's awesome. Yeah, I I like that a lot. And speaking of that, um do you I was I was fully expecting and we can kind of start winding now cuz we got to get to Justice League. I was going to be snarky, but I <laughs> I kind of I enjoyed Justice League <laughs> enough, but we'll get to that. But I was expecting one of the post-credit scenes uh to be Revealing that Loki had the Tesseract again because he had that moment where he looked at right. it. Do you think that he took it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of course, mm-hmm. yeah. Of course, he took it. Uh, okay. uh, otherwise, what else happened to it? Asgard yeah. is destroyed. That's true. So, so that's true. It had to have gone someplace. So yeah, mm-hmm. of course, Loki took it. Okay. And then, do you? Uh, let's talk about the post-credit scenes. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about about the movie itself? <clears throat> uh no, I think we uh, pretty much covered covered it all. I thought it was I you know a lot of fun, a lot of yep. awesomeness. Same here. Uh definitely definitely a blast and uh I wonder I, I want to see uh Taika Waititi do more Marvel stuff. I would love for a fourth like if you would have told me a couple years ago that, like I I can't wait for Thor 4. Thor 4. Like I would have been like, no, you're you're mistaken, sir. But yeah, this turned around the Thor part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What was Stan Lee's cameo? Oh, the 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 barber. That's right. That was was good. That That was great. And uh, and yeah, I I mean, 
you know, I, Chris Hemsworth is a is a very attractive man. Oh, dude, he's and that haircut worked it, for him. It did. Yeah. It did. I I yeah. am secure enough to say that that was one handsome man. Yep. Yep. Um. Yeah. So then the post credit scenes. So yeah. Yeah. Um. I think you're supposed to infer that Thanos there is. That's is, what I. Is, yeah, is that's what to, I was kind of thinking. Yeah. That and then also, um, kind of backtracking a little bit, uh, the Taika Waititi's character, I can't remember his name, but, uh, but the end, like right before oh, the credits. Right. Oh, he's like, alive. Oh, he's, yeah. He's like, uh, oh, yeah, he died there. Yeah. <laughs> I've been carrying him around all day. I feel guilty. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's alive. Okay. It's just like, oh, uh, yeah, he so was so great. So good. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, Thanos, um, <laughs> Yeah, that, I yeah. think that's what you're supposed to uh, infer from that. Mm-hmm. I was, ho- I was, I was hoping for uh, like a Guardians. Scene. That would have been so much better. Yeah, because I, and I've said this before. I'm just okay. It's like okay, get Thanos. Like we get it. Just get him in the fucking movies. And well, I mean, yeah, he's not gonna be in Black Panther. Right. There's just no. There's no reason for him to be in Black Panther. Right. So oh, they're going to they're, they're going to go straight into Infinity, Infinity Wars War. like Thanos. Yep. Which. Sure. I. I mean. It's it's somewhat disappointing that you know this is this is the big villain mm-hmm. that the MCU has been building up to, and the only real screen time he's ever had was in Guardians. Right. Other than that, it's been post credit scenes yeah. with just tidbits. So yeah. I, I wish we would have had a little bit more build up mm-hmm. uh with Thanos. You know, Me people too. people praise Guardians too for having very little to do with the overall arching plot of the Avengers and kind of leaving Thanos out of it. Mm-hmm. While I loved Guardians too, I I could have gone with some character build with Thanos before. Yeah. So and Especially knowing that it's there's none, none more to be had. Yeah, I mean, we're we're what eight months out now from yeah, Avengers and Infinity Wars. That's right. And you know they've been building to towards Thanos since Avengers. Yeah. And I, as someone who doesn't read the comics, it's like, okay, cool. He's a dude with a glove. Right. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> like, there's not a whole lot. You know, no, known if you're not familiar with the comics mm. about Thanos, you, you know, it's, it's like you know that he's Gamora's adopted father, right? And like you, you don't know that Thanos is obsessed with death. In fact, in the comics, he's he's in love with death. Like the death is an actual uh, female character, huh. uh, and you know he's like in the Infinity. Wars in the comic books, he uses the glove to immediately wipe out half of life in the entire universe. Jesus. So, it, so you you don't really get that. Like you get kind of a tidbit in the in credit scenes in the Avengers where mm-hmm. the uh, Chitari are like to court or to fight them is to court death, and then Thanos turns around and smiles because you know if you know the comic books, he's obsessed with death and. Thinks that life is uh, an abomination on the universe, mm-hmm. but you know we really don't know anything about Thanos or his motivations right. right now. So I agree. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of nervous about that going into Infinity War. I'm but. I'm not nervous because I I have no reason to believe that it won't be anything short of great. Okay, sure. Well, I hope that I can gain some of that optimism. Fair enough. Um, not that I'm not that I'm pessimistic over it, or not that I'm. I don't think it's going to be a bad movie at all. I think it's going to be incredible. Um, but I'm a little. I have a little bit of a. Um, well, we're just also nerves about it. It's going to be two movies as well. Yeah, you got to think about that. So true, true. Um, and then you, not only will it be two two movies. But you're also going to have a Captain Marvel movie in between mm-hmm. that will probably expand on Thanos as well. So. Knock on wood. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Um, then you have the ant and the wasp, which is probably going to have nothing to do with Thanos. Right. Right. That's true. Okay. Yeah. We'll we'll see. We'll see. I'm I'm just amazed that we're like you said, like eight months yeah. out from. We Infinity got one War. more. We got one more. Black Panther, and that's it. And, and that's only in a few months, too. So February. I can't yeah, wait. Yeah, me too. So good. I, I saw the uh, trailer for that again, and just, man, 
Ah, uh, it looks like it's going to be so cool. It does. Yep. I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, also the end end credit scene. Oh, with, with Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Well, it was, a, it was a tie. Yeah. <laughs> so great. So great. Um, yeah, but. Uh, I kind of wish they'd go into. Uh, and it's the MCU, so it could be different, but mm. in, in the comp, in the comp books, uh, he's a, an elder of the universe. Same as the collector and their brothers. Oh, interesting. Oh, that would be interesting. So I, I'm, I'm really hoping that they kind of go. I, I feel like Benicio de Toro has such a small role. Yeah, I feel like he has to come back at some point, right? So I don't, I don't know. I, I'm hoping that he does, and I hope they kind of mm. expand on the elders of the universe and mm. uh, their brotherhood. So nice. Yeah, yeah that would be very cool. Um, I miss Benicio del Toro in the in the canon because yeah. like he he he's a lot of fun and I can see the similarities between those. I would love to see them share screen time. I would too. Amazing. I think it'd be a great scene. Oh yeah. Um, and to go back to Thanos, let's let's hope that when Infinity War comes, they uh, uh, Marvel makes sure that they spend enough on the post-production so that doesn't look like Steppenwolf in, in justice league. Oh. And that will segue us into talking yeah. about justice league and, uh, Fekus, So do you remember how exciting it was when, uh, Marvel came out with the Avengers and we had, uh, a bunch of build up toward that and it totally delivered an exciting experience oh, and I everything. Do. I do yeah. remember. So what do you think of justice league? <laughs> I liked Justice League. Um, I thought it, I thought it was, I thought it was good. Not great. Had some issues. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of fun to be had in it, but it had probably the worst villain in any comic book movie I have seen. He was yeah. so bland mm-hmm. and so. If it wasn't for the team dynamic of the Justice League and the mm-hmm. character interactions, I think it would have been a total bust of a movie. Yeah. But overall, I enjoyed it. Um, I'll continue to enjoy it. I'll buy it and watch it. Interesting. Rewatch it. But like, I, it was it was good. And I don't know. <laughs> like I, I don't want to make it sound like I didn't like the movies. I really did, mm-hmm. but it, it did have some issues, and one of the biggest issues was Steppenwolf mm-hmm. for for me. In fact, he was the issue for me. Yeah, put it out there, he was the issue. Uh, I, I think he was he kept it from being a great movie, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Uh, yeah, and I'm I'm gonna kind of agree with you on a lot of your points there. Um, I you know I came out of the movie thinking you know I. As much as I've shit on the DC Universe movies and as much of an issue that I've had with all of them, this is probably the first DC movie that I was able to just kind of take it for what it was. I shut my brain off and was like, hey, I I had fun with this movie. I did. I, um, I did have a yeah. lot of fun with the movie. Yeah, and it was it was enjoyable. Like you said, the team dynamic was what made the movie. I thought that Ezra Miller as Barry Allen, the Flash, was was a scene stealer. He was. Yeah, he, every, he was great. He brought mm-hmm. a lot of levity to it. I also thought the same with Jason Momoa. Same I thought here. he was great as Aquaman. Mm-hmm. And I continue to say that Ben Affleck is one of the best uh, portrayals of uh, Batman slash Bruce Wayne. And. And I'll agree with you there. I, I like Ben Affleck a lot as Batman, but there was something about the way that Batman himself like maneuvered in the movie that just didn't – it looked weird. Like when he jumped around, it felt like he was – like there's a scene at the beginning where he is um, – he's on the roof of a building and he's on like the top of like a water tower thing. Yeah. And then he jumps down, but it's like – it's like he glides down, but not with his cape. It's like, it's like the camera like cut and paste him from that down to there. I'd have to read. I, I didn't get it, that feeling anything. Yeah, but I'd have it, to. It just felt like his his movements felt kind of weird and not as as, not as fluid fluid as they could be. And I don't know if that's I don't know if that's a choreography thing. I don't know if Ben Affleck is like, yeah, I don't want to do that much. <laughs> uh, just shoot around in a little bit. But that was kind of a downer for me. But I do enjoy his portrayal. What do you think of the 
rumors. I didn't really read too much into it, but that uh, Ben Affleck is looking for a, a cool way to phase out of. Yeah, I, that, I've yeah. read it, and it's. I find it extremely disappointing because I mm-hmm. really love his portrayal, and I do think that Justice League is a step in the right direction. Mm-hmm. So it it would disappoint me for for him to leave. So I would love to see him in another Justice League movie. Mm-hmm. I, I I love his interactions with the other team. He they do a really good job of showing the disconnect between Batman and the rest of the team because that's how yeah. Batman that's how Batman is. Oh yeah, like he his for him the 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 means or, or the ends always just find the means mm-hmm. for Batman. So no matter how you know terrible you might think his actions are for him, it's like this gonna have to do it mm-hmm. and people will resent him including those members of the justice league so i thought they did a really good job of showing that uh in the movie and i thought ben affleck played that really well as well mm-hmm. so i it would it would disappoint me greatly to see them change it i guess one of the other names that have been thrown around is jake gyllenhaal well i like jake gyllenhaal he yeah. does not strike me as a batman no i i, I don't see i don't see him as a bruce wayne i don't know i don't yeah. either yeah, that and that's that's a tough role to cast anyway. But sure, because um, you're really casting two characters. You're casting yeah. Bruce Wayne. You're casting Batman. They're two completely different people. Yeah, exactly. Um, at least they don't need to worry about the uh, the Christian Bale voice since they're just committing to the voice changer <laughs> thing. I I love the voice changing aspect of the suit. I think. Still? <laughs> oh, if you don't. I'm just, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just uh, being a dick. I no. mean, it, I didn't have a strong feeling toward it. Anyway. I, I, it I like that concept uh, over the uh, the growl. Mm-hmm. I, I think it makes more sense. It it does. It, it yeah, it does. And when you're talking about a billionaire, that yeah, of obviously he's gonna be able to do that. It just, I don't know. It just seems kind of. Mm. Well, I like it. Yeah, whatever. Kinda meh to me. Um. Cyborg, I thought was disappointingly forgettable. Yeah, he, the interesting thing about Cyborg is that I had no, I I know next to nothing about him from the comics. I, you, you know, I'm not very familiar mm. with him myself. But, but this movie didn't do that great of a job of expanding on him. True, anyway. true. And like when I saw him, like in the movie, I'm like, this seems like a really cool character. Like. It would have been really nice to get like a – and like, okay, okay. I get it that DC doesn't want to mimic Marvel. So they didn't want to do the whole like, oh, Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman, right. uh, Cyborg movie and then but that's, the Flash movie but and then the Justice Marvel League. benefited from that because yeah. we didn't need to be given a large introduction on characters for right. the big team-up movie. Exactly. So – you know that we get cyborg and they do as as admirable jobs as they can mm-hmm. to introduce us to both him and the flash yeah and aquaman for that uh you know the same with aquaman right it's just i felt like i wanted a little bit more depth with cyborg. yeah we as much as they didn't want to mimic marvel they probably should have right because there's a lot of I wouldn't even really say there is a lot of expectation on the audience, but it's like there's too much time, or they had to front load the movie with like introductions to all the characters, yeah. and like some of it was kind of cool, but it's also like you know you guys could have did could have done you know movies that, right, but yeah, um, but Cyborg I felt was an interesting character that I wish would have had more time with and more well it. The thing about Cyborg that I like the most is one of the things that I feel like that could have been expanded upon in another movie. Yeah. And that was the, uh, him trying to understand what he was, what powers mm-hmm. he really had. Yeah. And so you, you don't, you get a really short amount of time to kind of showcase how timid he is with his, his changes to himself and what he really can, he doesn't understand what he is yet or what he can mm-hmm. even do. And, I, I feel like a whole movie dedicated to that could have been great. Yeah, absolutely. But that's just not in the cards, I guess. No. Um, And then also, I, I kind of wish we would have gotten more of uh, uh, J.K. Simmons as Jim Gordon. Oh, me like, too. But I think they're, they're saving that for the Batman mm-hmm. movies. Which, God, I really hope it's still Ben Affleck. By that yeah, time. I hope that they still make him. <laughs> I, I think they probably will. They will. I'm, I'm sure that they will. There was a rumor going around that um, 
there was a it was a it was completely one hundred percent fake. Someone uh, it's it's actually really awesome. Um, someone on Reddit had posted a uh, had posted a long comment on a thread somewhere saying like, yeah, I'm I'm an insider with Warner Brothers and um, I. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have it on good authority that, uh, you know, they're actually, they're doing damage control. They're canceling the DC extended universe. Uh, <laughs> Shazam, Shazam has been shot and is in post-production. So instead of, they're going to scrap that instead of spending so much money on post-production <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> and then, yeah, the you're just going to scrap a movie thing, starting the rock. Yeah. And the most beautiful thing was uh, there was this big, long comment and everything. And then the response was from the director of Shazam and said, oh, wow, no one told me. I'd really like to sleep in. Can I sleep in tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's, that's that awesome. Is awesome. That's that's kind of epic. Um, but, yeah, and I I want nothing more than to see this cinematic universe actually do well and not like have me excited to see a movie like i was not that excited to see justice league um i think that is why i was so pleasantly surprised with how much i genuinely enjoyed it like i agree i genuinely enjoyed it it's there there were some issues with it and i know how divisive uh, Batman v Superman is, but to mm-hmm. me, that's still the best movie in the DCEU. I lo- every time I watch it, rewatch that movie, I like it even more. I still, I need to, I still need to revisit it. Cause I haven't, I haven't watched it since the theater. And you may not, your opinion may not change, but yeah. I, I felt like, uh, I love the darkness. So I, I kind of missed how dark the, I, I felt like justice league could have been darker. Uh, mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that with Batman v Superman. Uh, I just felt like the, there were no stakes yeah. in Justice League. Oh yeah, and then they had I I felt kind of insulted a little bit because they had like the one like the one collateral damage family yeah. that like was in the right, in the zone. It's like, okay, okay guys, do you really think like you can just get away with just showing one one like family in this area that isn't really that well like developed or anything i thought that was really oddly done. yeah i was like come on like uh i feel like i i don't know what was reshoots and what like joss whedon did and everything right. but i felt like maybe that was i in my head this isn't accurate obviously but in my head i have where joss whedon's like oh well you know we need to show some kind of stakes to this we need to show like some kind of something in danger like you know collateral damage and stuff and then Zack Snyder's just like what do you mean like what <laughs> <laughs> like uh what like you see buildings and shit blow up like is that not good enough um yeah so and I just thought that was kind of insulting to the audience like you can't just get away with just insulting. showing one I just thought it was oddly done yeah um but yeah I <laughs> um and I love the Flash and like I've of the comic books that I've read in my life I've read more DC than Marvel yeah and like like I've I've read quite a bit of the Flash and and uh, Batman and and Nightwing and and really the whole Bat family um but the <laughs> the thing I came away from the movie with with the Flash was like see now you have a use for. Zack Snyder doing slow motion every fucking scene. <laughs> like, that works for The Flash. I, I thought the, the stuff they did with uh, The Flash's uh, power being used with the, mm-hmm. uh, what is it, the Speed Force. Speed Force, yeah. I thought it was great. I Me thought it was so well shot. Mm-hmm. I, I th- Every time that they went into the, the Speed Force, I, I was excited because they did such a good job with that. Oh, yeah. And they could have, like, I feel like they didn't, like... With that type of thing, like the immediate thing is, oh, we should compare this to Quicksilver. Sure. And especially like Quicksilver in um, X-Men Days of Future Past, like that scene that everyone loved. But it's like it didn't even – like that – the the depiction of the Flash and the Speed Force in, in Justice League didn't invite those comparisons because they no. made it their own thing. Right. And I, I enjoyed that. And just Ezra Miller's facial expressions during it. So oh, the – I, we'll talk about the we'll talk one. About the, the one, because yeah. the one was fan freaking tastic. <laughs> yeah, but um, but yeah. So while we're in non spoilers, 
Okay. This had slightly troubled production a little sure. bit. Um, but even then, I don't think there is – in this day and age with this backing – for this amount of money go, that goes into creating this movie and this IP, there's no excuse for having such shitty green screen effects. Like, yeah, it, this, was it was bad. Like at the the final fight scene stuff. The final fight scene, and then really any time, any time there was a tight shot on one or more characters in a in a in a frame that had like a ba- like it was a green screen backdrop, and it was like it was so bad and off-putting just yeah uh, like there's there's no excuse for that there's just none like the same thing happened in like independence day resurgence yeah yeah that and was, like that, man that was rough yeah i'm just like this is it's 2017 like we we have the technology <laughs> we can make it better yeah we can make it faster yeah and then steppenwolf like good god like that literally looked like a cutscene from like <sighs> a video game yeah from it, a video game from the previous generation, like a PS3 video game. Yeah, that like, man, that was, it was bad. Step Wolf took me, took me out a bit, mm-hmm. man. I, you know what though, I did enjoy the uh, the the exposition with Steppenwolf. Wolf. That that scene. yeah, that was cool. I, the Green Lantern Corps mm-hmm. was introduced into the DCEU. Uh, I, I I did enjoy that part. Yeah, but. Like the way that that was shot had kind of a Lord of the Rings feel. Right, that was, that was pretty cool. But Steppenwolf fell into the same trap that mm. uh, Marvel's been fighting. Uh, yeah. His motivations are not very clear, and no. he's, he was just a bland character. Yep, just yeah. very bland. And like, I really one... hope the dark side is a lot, lot better. And that's the thing. Like, there was having not not really read much like i i haven't read like justice league or anything but so i don't know much about dark side or D- anything dc's thanos dc's thanos yeah. right <laughs> so like there was one reference to dark side in the movie yeah, it's it just like a throwaway the, line it was a throwaway line which i don't yeah. have a problem with that which that's fine but coming off of batman v superman i kind of thought like okay well they're just going to dive right into dark side and like I was thinking it could have been kind of cool if they would have actually like not jerked us around with with hinting and just go into their big bad. Like I, I thought that would have been a good way. Don't think, given what we saw with the end credit scene, I don't think that's the route they're going to take. Right. Oh yeah. I, and I, right. I am much more happy. I'm much more satisfied with the direction I think that they're going into. Okay, we'll talk about that in yeah. spoilers. But um, that's true. Yeah, that is a that is a good point because it it would be. A little bit marvelly. It would be. Um, yeah, but at this point, at this point, I have thoughts about where I want this to go. Let's. Yeah, we can go into spoilers here in just a second. Where do you want to see it go without spoiling the movie? Too. Much? I I want the Justice League to have a movie where we don't go after a supernatural force. I, I think mm-hmm. uh, more of a well, where I want it to go. I don't want it to spoil what the end credit scene is going to be. Sure. So I let's just say I like the direction they're headed with the the league itself. Mm. I want them to have more of a earthbound reality villain. Okay. Uh in the next and then maybe if if the train's still moving <laughs> go to dark side. Okay. Sure. Um at this point even though I enjoyed the movie for the most part, I don't know if I'll buy it. But I'll see it again if it hits like HBO Go. Um, I at this point I'm just so frustrated with how how much they've how much difficulty they've had with with doing this universe thing, and I think they are too because I think it stands to lose like fifty to a hundred thousand dollars because of just poor box office. Um, fifty to a hundred thousand? Oh, a million, million. I was gonna say it's like hundred million. Yeah. <laughs> no, that I'm sure. It'll make its money back with the foreign markets and DVD sales. Sure, I guarantee you. sure. But that's not but, what they want, though. I mean, no, they want to be able to make it not. back in the box office. But at this point, and this is just me not having, like, not having read much outside of this particular bubble that I'm about to reference. But at this point, I would just be ecstatic if they were just like, okay, you know, either either a we're just not going to do this whole 
DC Universe thing anymore, or hey, we're going to and, and instead of doing this, we'll do what I'm about to say. Um, we're just going to scrap that, start fresh, start a new Batman Bat Family universe, and just keep it contained to that cast of characters and stuff for mm. a while like because i think that that is constrained enough to where they're not going to have to deal with all of these big things that they're that they clearly can't juggle that well and it's but there is enough there that they could have compelling characters and compelling situations and stuff for a long time so i would either think that they could either do that instead of the dc universe or do like uh, the, its own thing. It's probably too deep into the DC universe now to. Oh well, yeah, to no, abandon at this point, because yeah. you have you already have uh, Batgirl mm-hmm. going into production. You got Nightwing going into production. Yeah. Suicide Squad two, even right. though the first one was terrible. God damn it! Um, yeah. So their their chips are on the table. They have to yeah. fall through with Gotham the Gotham City Sirens. So, also yeah. is a thing apparently. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, in an alternate universe, I would (laughs) like to see, like, a Bat Family shared universe instead of a whole DC thing. I also think that, unfortunately, and I don't buy into the conspiracy theories things or anything like that, but I think that they're fighting an uphill battle now, too, and people just expect the DC movies to not be great. Yeah. And I think that hurts the box office, and I Mm -hmm. think some critics go in a little biased as well. Sure. And don't really give these movies a fair shake at first. Right. Well, they've had the last five, six years, however long it's been. How long has it been since Man of Steel? That's been, like... That was 2013? It's been four or five years. Four or five years? Jesus. Um, Yeah, they've had the last four or five years um, to create their own, like, expectations and stuff, too. So it's like, like, I was relieved when I enjoyed this movie. It's not, it's not a great movie. There are some very big problems with it, yeah. but I at least enjoyed it. And the problem with me enjoying it is that I enjoyed it because it was it was more lighthearted than the other movies. And that well, felt that... like, yeah, that felt like a marvelization of the of their franchise. And I don't want that. I, 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 I want yeah. the dark. I, you know, I, I enjoyed Man of Steel because it was dark. I enjoyed mm-hmm. Batman v Superman because it's a darker tone. I don't want another Marvel universe. I want a different universe, and I and I think yeah, I I I'm, and I I know I'm in the minority, but I think that I I still really enjoy Man of Steel. I love Batman v Superman because of their tones, and I think uh, Justice League uh, does itself a detriment, in my opinion, by making it more Marvel. Mm-hmm. I thought Wonder Woman was still dark in tone mm-hmm. with some lightheartedness into it as well. Yeah. So I, 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 they're gonna do what they're gonna do to, to make Course it as, as 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 successful as they can. Yeah. But you know, I'm sure I'm not. I can't be the only one that prefers a darker tone of, in this universe. I just can't be. I and I agree. And and even though I don't like the entries that we've had so far with the dark tone, I think that the the DC canon invites a darker tone. It certainly does. And, it, it always has. Yeah, and it and it bums me out cuz I did enjoy Justice League, but I enjoyed it because it reminded me of Marvel and it's a a uh it was a departure from the established tone of the shared it, universe. And I think that's what took away took away a little bit from the films for me was mm-hmm. that it, it went towards a little bit more Marvel. Mm-hmm. So also I couldn't, I couldn't play any of the characters. I was just like, I saw the cutscenes with, with Steppenwolf <laughs> and I just thought that, it, I mean, I had my controller and everything. It was weird. Man, that was rough. Yeah. God damn. Um, yeah. So let's, let's dive into spoilers for justice league here. We'll play a clip from the trailer and then, yeah, we we'll, we will spoil it. So if you haven't watched it yet, uh, go watch it, come back and listen or skip ahead to the potpourri section. Superman was a beacon to the world. He didn't just save people. He made them see the best parts of themselves. All right. I don't recognize this world. We don't have to recognize him. We just have to save him. Spoilers on for Justice League. 
Okay, so let's let's start with the end. Let's start with the end credit scene. You said that you're excited about where it's where it's going to go. My thought is since the the scene is uh, uh, Lex Luthor saying like, "Well, we're going to have to have a league of our own." So, are they going to be playing baseball with a bunch of women? Yes, yeah, so it's going to. The, they're they're finally going to start a women's softball league. Mm-hmm. Because women don't play baseball, Matt. <laughs> Jesus, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you don't want them to it's get just, hurt. <laughs> well. That's that's the uh, the conflict of the movie right there. That, that is yeah. the conflict, you know. Which yeah. is baseball or softball, right? Uh, Jesus. No, um, I, I like the idea of a uh, a band together, mm-hmm. uh, villain team mm-hmm. to combat the Justice League to continue From, with uh, Luther's hatred of mm-hmm. these godlike titans that yeah that. Sh- have more power or influence than he does. I, I and I love that, and that in credits. Anyway, I thought it was great. Yeah. With was uh, death, death, death stroke. Yeah, death Sl- stroke. Slade Wilson. Yes. Uh, yeah, and I, I love Joe, Mar- whatever his name is, uh, that's playing him. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought that was cool. Yeah, I, th- I, I like that a lot. Um, yeah. So I really hope that's the direction they take, and they they do the uh, the villain team versus the. Uh, the Justice League. I, I really right. hope that's how they go. Yeah, I think that would be cool too. Um, like you said, I, I really like the idea of just a more human grounded right. villain thing. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that would be cool. And then was there a mid credit scene? There, yeah, oh, yes. it was the race. Yeah, I thought that, was, was, a, so that was a great scene. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. That was a nice. That was nice because yeah, you know, I thought that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, Superman versus the Flash. Mm-hmm. That which was I, great. I don't know. I'm sure there's got to be some comic book that has answered that question. I just don't know who. Yeah, from what I understand, my friend that I saw with told me that it's been addressed in the comics that there was a whole thing. I don't know. Like, I guess. Barry Allen is faster than, or uh, Superman is faster than Barry Allen, but Wally Wally West is is faster than faster Superman. than Superman. Something like that. There was a whole thing, but interesting. Yeah, um, but yeah, that that was great, and and yeah, the Flash. I man, uh, yeah, Ezra he was Miller great. Killed it. He he was, yeah. he was a lot of fun. Uh, maybe a little bit too much levity at times for yeah. my taste. Uh, again, it goes back to me enjoying the darker tone of it. But no, mm-hmm. he he was he was a scene stealer. He was a lot of fun to watch on screen, and mm-hmm. you know, I, I it makes me really excited to see a Flash movie. Me too, me too. And I I don't know the status of the Flash movie now because I know that's lost like a couple of directors, yeah, hasn't it? Which is a shame. Um. It's yeah, I'm very excited to see that. And like any time I see a DC movie like this, I'm like, okay, well, I need to really watch the DC like TV shows at least to get something yeah. that's good. And I've watched like five episodes of um, The Flash, and I mean it's fun. Oh yeah, I just took that there. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I, I'm very eager to see what. Uh, what they do as far as a as a movie is concerned. Okay, here it is. Um, it's expected in twenty twenty. Oh, wait, that's Flashpoint. I don't know. It's all confusing. That it, Flashpoint's the Flash movie. Right, right. So twenty twenty. Yeah. Oh, man. I didn't know that they had announced it as Flashpoint. I yeah. didn't know that it was <laughs> uh, the super fast hero, the Flash, travels into a timeline where Earth is a mess. So. <laughs> The timeline of the movies. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just man. I wish that they would just be able to uh, course correct and and get this into a better place. But well, I I'm I'm hopeful for the Aquaman movie as well because I, I yeah. did. I, Jason Mo was great. Mm-hmm. I, I love the uh, the kind of the brutish uh, loner. Uh, status they have for Aquaman here, and yeah. I thought the scenes that they the the fight scene within Atlantis underwater, I thought that it was great, very interesting. Yes, yeah, so it has I, me very interested so in seeing the movie to see a whole movie where mm-hmm. it'd be based upon a lot of scenes like that. I very very mm-hmm. much want to see that. Yeah, and I think James Wan directed. Aquaman. Yeah, that sounds right. And you know, Aquaman is yeah. another one of those characters I'm not all that familiar with, but I. 
I'm really intrigued by the, at least the movie portrayal. So. Yeah, me too. And Jason Momoa was, was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, he's great. The Lasso of Truth scene with him. Oh, that was good. That was great. That was good. I thought that was, that was yeah, fantastic. That was, that was like prime Joss Whedon. Yeah, thing. yeah. Um, you almost have to expect that was his scene. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so was, <laughs> to go back to uh, Lex Luthor in the, the end credit scene, um, when they showed him or they showed the guy pertaining or, uh, pretending to be, Lex. to be him. Yeah. In the cell in, uh, in, uh, wow. Like Arkham. Uh, all I thought was, uh, all I thought was like, if he has a fucking Jolly Rancher, I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> um, but yeah, but to also to go back to, uh, the flash, I did appreciate as obviously a Stephen King fan, towerjunkiespod.com. I really appreciated the pet cemetery references. Oh yeah, I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, which how did you feel about the resurrection of Superman? I was a fan, especially I, I, I love the scene where he's back and they just they have to try to control him. Yeah. I I didn't want him to come back and just be boom, Superman, okay, let's go right. fight. I, I love the fact that they, you know, he is, I'm sure, should ever happen, coming back from the dead is a rather jarring experience. Sure, sure. So I, I like the idea of him being first angry that he's back, angry at Bruce for doing mm. what he did. And I, I, I thought the fight scene there was, was so well done, mm. especially the part with the flash. Yeah, when that the, was great. Oh, yeah. The look on his face alone was so awesome. Right. Um, God, Ezra Miller was great. A um, couple things about that. So, <laughs> what I really uh, like, it's not, it's not stated in the movie. It's not it in my head while that scene was going on. Since like it's Wonder Woman, Aquaman, the Flash fighting Superman or containing him. Then like the whole time I'm thinking like yeah well Batman's not here yet and I'm like he's the only one that doesn't have superpowers right. like I just imagined him like finally coming to the scene like just panting like sorry guys <laughs> right, sorry, sorry guys I just I was on I just gotta you know had to take the bus but um uh yeah and when they had their kind of stare down and before they brought in Lois Lane I thought honestly for a second I a part of me thought like. Sure, the Jolly Rancher thing that that was a joke I made, but like in my head, I was like, "Don't fucking say anything about Martha, please don't say anything <laughs> about Martha." And like I said it to myself in somewhat of a joking manner, but the part of me was like, "They're gonna fucking say something about Martha to bring him back to reality." Like they're going to double down on that. I don't. I, I had I, I, a very small part of me thought that it was a possibility. I, I didn't expect it to be. I, I like how it turned out. How it me was too. Lois being the big guns. That was good. Uh, right. I, I you know being Batman, I kind of expected him to come out with some like fucking kryptonite bomb right. or something like that but no i, I like how that, that played out yeah the then the next thing was uh was superman takes lois to to his uh his mom's farm farm and everything and then like there's one scene where they're standing there and he's like he's coming back like he's 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 back to being clark and everything or back to normal to an extent and then like she's saying like oh you remembered this place and he's like yeah and all that and then like all I'm thinking is like, don't turn around, don't turn around and see the scene, see the sign that says foreclosure because you're gonna go crazy. And get, get mad again. Like, don't turn around, dude. Um, and then also the dialogue in that scene was a little weird to me because I felt like it was weird that Lois was like, "You smell nice." It's like you've been dead for like a couple of. Well, that's like, why for, it's so however much surprising time. that. He smells nice. He was just sure. re resurrected in the resurrection tomb, so he's he's not going to smell like decomposing body. Sure, sure, but it's like it's just I, I, I don't know. know. I liked weird. it. I was like, well, did I not before? I, I, <laughs> I'm sure the conversation between a now alive, recently mm -hmm. dead person is going to be awkward. Well, yeah, yeah. So I <laughs> I don't know. I I liked it. I thought yeah. It was, yeah. Uh what did you think of the of the sh like the speed force and using the speed force to resurrect him and hit the mother oh, I thought thing. it was neat. I thought it was really yeah, cool. Uh, me too. That scene was I was really well done. So. That was the moment where I was like, okay, the flash, slow motion, Zack Snyder, that yeah. works. Um I loved the idea that he had to hit it at the exact right. moment that it hit the water. I was like, that's that's pretty cool. Um and given Barry Allen's like kind of 
nervous energy and, and unsure of himself kind of thing, like that made it a little more tense. Obviously it was going to work, obviously, right. but it, like, I was like, I was in that, I was in it in that moment. That's I not how that. I expected them to bring Serpent Man back. I expect, mm-hmm. cause you know, at the end of Batman V Soup, when they kind of showed the, the yes. dirt kind of rise a little bit from the, I, I kind of expected him to just appear, yep. I guess. So I, I kind of prefer it this way than to him just like appearing. I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of either way because him appearing that would have been kind of I I would have had problems with that I'm sure but this way I do have some slight issues with it just because it's the same thing that the same type of thing that was problematic um, with Age of Ultron it's like okay we have a situation where uh, something happens that uh, something is done that causes great destruction and everything so the heroes are going to do the exact same thing in the hopes of doing something good like age of ultron had them creating uh ultron and then in creating uh vision and then now it's like they even say in the movie like uh you know lex luther did this and he created doomsday you know we don't know what's going to happen we don't know fuck all about any of this and bruce is all like but we need to do it um and i get it because like you said ends justify the means that makes sense for that character but it's also like i was just like okay guys <laughs> i know it's going to bring back superman but you guys are playing with fire it's it's a little silly um well is either that or let step mold destroy everything and if they had and that's true and if they and if steppenwolf was a more compelling villain and maybe the uh, the stakes, like the stakes, were high enough. But it, as, if the stakes were even higher with the with him, I would buy into that a lot more. But as it stands, Steppenwolf was like no, it, he just he, wasn't compelling. He was the downfall. Like he was the detriment of that movie. Like I said, yeah. that he was what kept that from being a great movie. And that's mm-hmm. it's unfortunate. Like he was a very unfortunate bad guy. Yeah, bland, just. What? Why? What? Right. what like what? What's your What's your point, man? Ugh. I just unfortunately, it drug it. You know, it drug the movie down. Yeah, Steph Wolf drug the movie absolutely. down. Absolutely. If it weren't for the group dynamic and mm. the, the the actual good guy characters, that just it, that would have been a bomb movie for me. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But the Justice League saved the movie. Mm-hmm. Not just the world, but the movie. Right. And then in my head, I kept saying, like, what are we, some kind of Justice League? I'm uh, so glad they didn't say Justice League. I, <laughs> me too. I, that would have just, like, there's no good way to say it. It's like, we're a Justice League. Yeah. Oh, stop it. <laughs> um, I did I did like the kind of hints at it, like um, uh, like like Lex Luthor saying, like, a league of our own. Or, yes, that. And that then, was, was yeah. And then Superman, when he comes to kind of save the day, um he says, oh, I can't remember what Steppenwolf says, but he says something like, um, you stand, you guys stand for truth and it's, or you stand for something and it's, uh, like hope or something. And it's, uh, um, and it's silly or something, or like yeah. you guys are downfall. And then Superman comes up and he's like, I stand for truth and, and justice. justice. And I'm like, that was cool. That was very, cool. I, I did enjoy like the end, the end fight scene I thought was, was good. Despite yeah. Steppenwolf just being a shit bad guy. There was a lot of fun for me to be had with the end mm-hmm. fight scene. Like I, I love the, the stuff with Aquaman, uh, being thrown around by uh cyborg. Yeah. Um, I, I liked, uh, Superman's battle with Steppenwolf. Cause I thought, you know, for once, and I've never been a Superman fan, but I mm-hmm. it just really felt I, him kind of like come off as so badass at that point. Yeah, he's like, "I'm back. You're fucking dead." Man. Right? It's like this is this is not your time. I'm Superman. And I'm back. Yeah, that so, was a very cool, very cool way to use Superman. Yeah. I had some issues with it because, like, there's like it's within within seconds of each other. It's like okay, well, um, we need cyborg is is splitting the splitting the DC the cosmic mother, cubes, the uh, mother things, mother boxes, mother boxes. Um, and so we need we need you to hey Superman, you're here. Um, you can kick Steppenwolf's ass. We need you to take him down. And then he's like, okay. And then he's like, oh wait, no, we got to save civilians and stuff. And just like just like that, it's like. You just were just told like the fate of everything hangs in cyborg splitting the boxes. Like maybe K 
kick Steppenwolf's ass a little bit and let Flash, you know, do his thing. So what you're saying is allow collateral damage when surely well, Superman could help out in that? When obviously we just have that one family that's in the <laughs> right. house. Then I think that it's I think Flash can handle that. <laughs> I did like that like that uh that Flash was was doing his thing, and then he sees Superman sort of with that the building. With the big building. I thought that was that was good. Yeah, um, it was very Marvel-y. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That is true. Um, yeah, yeah. Damn, that is true. Like all the stuff I like about this movie are stuff that makes me think of Marvel. I'm like, a, you know what? I I almost would have liked a little bit more if the Justice League movie would have been the Superman story of him coming back and not being quite Superman. Okay. And that lead, you know, the, the resolutions made at the end of that movie. Mm-hmm. And then it leads into, you know, a bigger DCEU, uh, mm-hmm. bad guy. Now, it, that'd be hard to do right after Batman v Superman, v Superman right. because you're having, you know, another, you know, Good guy versus good guy thing. So. Yeah, that's but, true. But I, I kind of would have liked the dark Superman storyline, right? Which I thought would have been neat. But. Yeah, and I mean they could have pulled that off too because it wouldn't, it was, it wouldn't have been like two superheroes right. battling. It'd be like a dark version of. You know. I think that would have been a lot more compelling than uh, yeah, faceless bad guy number one, right? So that he was so boring that they didn't finish. <laughs> doing the CGI him. rendering him <laughs> like it's was like all right I can't stand this the, anymore. The anime is just like <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, <laughs> a horn here. I don't yeah. know. Oh God. Um, give him a hammer. I guess. <laughs> so Superman in the mustache thing. Have you been reading about this? Yeah, I. Just, I, I well, the, during the reshoots, they had to go and you know digitally erase his mustache because. He was making another movie where the contract says oh. the, can't get rid of the mustache. I okay, okay, that makes a lot more sense. Well, it well, did look weird because like I didn't, I didn't notice anything. I only noticed it in the first, in that first scene. The <laughs> which okay, I loved this. The opening scene where you see Superman outside of the burning building and the kids come up. Yeah. And say, Can we interview you for our yeah, podcast? That, that was. Yeah. I was like, that's great. I I I liked that, but. His face in that looked like I was like, what the what is going like? I honestly thought like I honestly thought that the weirdness of his face was because um, I thought that the movie was making a point that when he's Superman, he distorts his face a little bit oh, so that people I, can't tell him from Clark. Clark no, Clark. I didn't even notice. But no, it it was just it turned out to be that I had thought I had thought that. For some reason, I thought that Zack Snyder had him wear a mustache, <laughs> and Joss Whedon was like, "No, it's a racist." <laughs> that's what I thought. So that makes a lot more yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, that's not. That wasn't at all. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so yeah. Um, anything else we can talk about with this movie? Um, no, I think we pretty well covered. Yeah, yeah. Who do you think wins, Flash or Superman? Superman does. Okay. Yeah. Well, sure. and not because it's canon. Mm-hmm. So you've, you've read the Dark Knight Returns, right? I lent you that. Uh, Dark Knight mm-hmm. Returns. Is that it's the, the th- that's what uh, Dark Knight Rises is kind of based off of. Older Batman uh, I has retired, comes out of retirement. Don't think you loaned me the killing joke. Okay. They're not. Well, there's a uh, it's the Dark Knight trilogy in comics is the mm-hmm. Dark Knight uh not the Dark Knight Rises um the Dark Knight Returns Dark Dark Knight Strikes Again and Dark Knight Three which Dark Knight Three just came out okay. or just fit, didn't just come out it it just wrapped up earlier this year mm-hmm. and uh, basically the premise in Dark Knight Three is there's a group of Kryptonians that are trying to take over Earth mm-hmm. uh. And Kal-El has uh, been put out of commission because he feels like it's it's no longer his job to take to show Earthlings how to uh, how to live. Okay. Well, he he eventually comes comes out of it and uh, joins the fight again. <clears throat> and at the, at the very end of the uh, of the storyline, Batman's worried that uh, Superman's not going to be powerful enough. And then there's this. Re- it's Frank Miller's the one that that penned this, and mm-hmm. it's it's really cool the way it's done for me. At least it was for me, where Superman just 
jumps up and just fucking schools this guy. And <laughs> you see, you see a look on uh, Batman's face, and the inner dialogue is him going, "You son of a bitch! All these years you've been holding back this entire time." <laughs> so pretty much saying is like all this time, like Superman's never really shown his true strength, mm-hmm. but you know now that the stakes are that high, he's. He's going all out. So in my nice. mind, it's that's kind of my my theory is you know it's Superman's got it. Okay. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'll agree with you there. Okay. Yeah, um, but does he let Barry win? Maybe he does. Yeah. Maybe you give old Barry a win. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that does it for our review. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I've got nothing to say <laughs> anymore about that. I don't yeah, yeah, that's that's a review of Justice League. Are you excited for I will say this. I did enjoy the scene back uh, and I can never pronounce the name of it, but uh the Amazonian island. Oh yeah. I I liked seeing back going back to that civilization and kind of Me seeing too. the shit there, so. Yeah, cuz it reminded me of a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> So it had that going for it. Um yeah, yeah. Oh, and also uh, another thing, another feather in the cap of the Flash is that uh, I liked the first kind of Justice League f- rescue scene where they, they're, uh, I don't even remember what it was. They're in that warehouse or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, I liked that. I liked the scene with with Batman telling him like, just save one, sure. just save one, yeah. and you'll know. I was like, that's 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 great. That is awesome. Um, ben Affleck. Yep. Best yeah. Bat. So, all right. Well, that'll do it for this review of Justice League, and we're going to go into a probably quick potpourri yeah, section. Quick, quick. Yeah, quick, uh, And so if you're this is your first time listening, potpourri is a section of the podcast where we kind of wind things down and talk about something that we've watched lately or looking forward to or what have you. So, Fekus, do you, how much do you have? Do you just have a small little anything? tidbit. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. So they just released the first teaser trailer for Incredibles 2. Yes. And man, am I excited for this. Me like too. I I've been waiting since what? Like 2004? 2004? Yeah. yeah. Oh man, mm-hmm. so long and it's just it brings Brings you right back to it. It really with does little Jack, with Jack Jack. So uh, I, and Craig T. Nelson's voice acting. Oh, he's is perfect. So he is perfect, perfect for uh, for Mister Incredible. Robert Parr. Yeah. I I cannot say how much I am looking forward to this movie. It's gonna. It's just gonna be great. Yeah, and it's interesting because I like I love Pixar and I love The Incredibles and like I mean. I've never been like that really. And this is more just me and Pixar in general is I've never been like one to be like, Oh, I can't wait for the sequel to this Pixar movie because like, you know, cars two is a huge misfire. Well, my, my, uh, uh, my jokes have been, it was like, we, we've had to suffer the three cars movies before I got in a, right? and an airplanes before I got my sequel to Incredibles. True. But the, the Incredibles story, it invites, invites a, sequel. a sequel. Yeah. So oh, yeah. It, it's, been far too long we needed this absolutely absolutely and so seeing the teaser i'm just like i'm back in it i'm like i i'm i'm pumped for it yep i'm very pumped for it can't wait um yeah yeah i just hope that you know no one gropes me or anything when i see (laughs) it because well depends on who you go see it with i guess yeah yeah that's true um so okay and then yeah so i'm excited any more about incredibles 2 the memes on the internet have been pretty funny. I haven't seen really any of them. Well, the, you know, there's, I guess there's big like, well, it's been, you know, some odd years. How come Jack Jack's still a baby? And, you know, Cumber's <laughs> like, if Stewie Griffin could be a baby for 17 years, <laughs> little Jack Jack can be a baby still too. Shut your mouth. Nice. So the, the internet's nice. been pretty funny about the whole, uh, the whole thing. So that's good. <laughs> nice. Um, great. Well, I have. Probably one thing. Yeah, one thing for Potpourri. Um, on Hulu, so I recently splurged and I did a uh, – I went I went no commercials on Hulu. Big spender. Yes. And it is so worth it. <laughs> like I've always been like a big like, – How much is it with commercials? Like eight bucks? With or? commercials is eight dollars I believe and then mm-hmm. without commercials it's twelve. Um, so it's a pretty big jump. That's a pretty big jump. Yeah, and I've always been like, anytime someone's like, "Oh, I don't have Hulu because I don't want to watch commercials," I'm like, "Well, you know, 
you're just spoiled by Netflix. Like, right. you know, commercials were like, that's the only way we've you been watch watching that. commercials. For, yeah. You know, 70 years of te- television. Exactly. So it never bothered me. And then like the second that I switched to the reason that I switched to no commercials was because I had gotten, uh, uh, kind of, uh, started watching the last couple seasons of, of South Park and the way that the ads on Hulu go with South Park is it will play one ad and then we'll play the opening theme music and then play another ad oh, and then start the episode. And I'm like, to be quite honest, I watch it like I have it playing in the background in between phone calls at work because yeah. I work from home. And so I'm like, okay, I don't want to have to go through an hour of work and have only gotten to the beginning of an episode. Yeah. So like it just didn't make sense for me to have ads on. So I took the ads off and it's 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 changed your life. It has forever. changed my life. And I'm watching more Hulu stuff because of it. Um and so they they have a documentary called it's a I believe it's a Hulu original documentary um, called Too Funny to Fail. Have you heard about this? No. Okay, so it is the story of the Dana Carvey show, which in the '90s he when he left SNL was big, huge publicized thing, and his next project was he was going to create a prime time sketch show um, on ABC, and the the people that he got, like he, like the people who worked on it were, yeah, I, I know. Yeah. The, yeah. I know the story behind the story. Yeah. 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 The story behind the show. Right. So he has all of these people <laughs> and it failed horribly. And so it only aired like eight episodes, yeah. I think. So the documentary is all about that, all about what in, what went into making it. And it has like, obviously some of the funniest people on the planet talking about it. And it's just, it was such a blast. It was, it was so interesting because it's so they're so far removed from it that they they're talking candidly. Oh they're, sure, yeah, yeah, and they're talking like how how they how they just completely mis, misfired a lot of things. Like one of the big parts is that like the opening thing, uh, the opening sketch of the entire show, prime time. Their lead in was Home Improvement, um, prime time network TV. Their opening sketch for the very first episode was Dana Carvey as Bill Clinton. Uh, breastfeeding babies and animals with, with full like rubber nipples, milk actually coming out of them. That's so weird. It's so weird. And like, they're talking about it. Like how the, how did we do it? Like, why did we do that? Like they wanted to be, they wanted to show that it would be different. And like, Oh yeah. They showed they, that again. Yeah. And like they had like ABC's part, like they had one of the uh, executives from ABC on in, in the documentary and like ABC wanted like church lady and all of his right. SML things. And then they have this and then they had a bit where, and I'll, I'll this is the, yeah, oh, this was great. So they, part of it when it aired was that they had weekly sponsors so like they had like Mountain Dew and Taco Bell sponsors. So then they would promote it as like the Taco Bell Dana Carvey show as a throw, as a kind of funny throwback right. to like other like variety shows in the past. And, uh, <laughs> so there's a moment where they didn't realize like, uh, one of the, uh, I think it was, uh, Robert Smeagol said that he, uh, he just assumed like he had never seen home improvement, but he knew Tim Allen from his stand up and everything. He just assumed like, Oh yeah, Tim Allen's this guy guy. He's kind of a rough guy. He's uh that that's gotta be kind of a, an edgy show. And they showed in its entirety, a promo from ABC, which one of the downfalls of it is that a Disney had bought ABC, um, like right before it aired. So right before it premiered. So there's a bit or there's a part where they show one of the mid middle of the season episodes. It shows the uh, preview for home improvement. And it's like, th- it's like this week on a very special home improvement. It's every parent's worst nightmare, losing a child. <laughs> and then it shows Jonathan Taylor Thomas. telling like, I don't want to die. Dad. <laughs> and he's like, no, we're going to fight this. You're going to be okay. And, uh, and it's just like on a very special, a very special home improvement. Followed by the Diet Mountain Dew Dana Carvey <laughs> show. Or Diet Mug Root Beer Dana Carvey show. And it is it's fucking hysterical. Um but yeah, it, it's it's a really good documentary. I highly recommend checking it out. It's on Hulu. Um yeah, and I like that I 
uh, started this by talking about how it's, oh, yeah, no ads. It's it's a movie, so it doesn't have any ads. But it's on Hulu. Too funny to fail. Very good. It has a lot of very talented people talking about it. Yep. Maybe it'll put it on Netflix one day and I'll watch it. <laughs> That's fair, yeah. <laughs> I could also give you my Hulu password if you want. No, but, no, that's cheating. Uh, I'm paying. I'm paying the twelve dollars. Like, if people can get the use out of it. I'll give you a dollar. Oh, okay. Yeah. And anyone listening, you can get it. It's a. It's a obsessive. I'm kidding. Yeah, I was gonna say. Anyway, like no, there's no way. Um, yeah, so that, that'll do it for this episode of The Obsessive Viewer. Uh, sometime soon we're going to do that episode about the sexual harassment allegations and everything. And then also, as you heard at the top of this episode, we are currently running a promotion for uh, a free t-shirt. Uh, basically, if you uh, rate and review us on iTunes, send a screenshot of the review to matt at obsessiveviewer.com. By December 31st, you will be entered into a drawing for a free shirt. Um, uh, that I will pick from the entries on January 1st. And yeah, uh, having said all that, I think that'll do it. Thank you guys for listening and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the obsessive viewer presented by obsessiveviewer.com. You can find more of our episodes at ovpodcast.com, and you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or anywhere else podcasts are found. If you'd like to support the show, the best and easiest way is to leave us a rating and a review on iTunes. More ratings and reviews means it'll be easier for people to find the show in the highly competitive film and TV podcast genre. It also provides us with valuable feedback on the show. If you'd like to donate to the podcast, you can make a one-time PayPal donation at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate or become a patron at patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer for recurring donations with different reward tiers. Every donation goes toward paying the fees to keep the podcast running and is greatly appreciated. For official Obsessive Viewer merch, including shirts, mugs, notebooks, phone cases, and more, visit our Tee Public store. You can also buy other great Tee Public designs in our store, and we'll get a small commission on the sale. You can find a link to the store in the show notes of this episode and at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate. The Obsessive Viewer's theme song is An Eclipse of Events and is provided by Loudlight from their EP, Mistakes We Must Make. You can find that and more great music from them on iTunes and like their Facebook page at facebook.com slash loudlikemusic. Any and all feedback on the podcast is encouraged. We love to hear from you guys. You can contact us by emailing podcast at obsessiveviewer.com or by tweeting us at obsessiveviewer, at obsessivetiny, and at I am Mike White. You can also like us on Facebook and join the Facebook group at facebook.com slash theobsessiveviewer where you can take part in discussions and polls between episodes. For more podcast content, check out Anthology, Matt's solo podcast, where he's reviewing The Twilight Zone as a first-time viewer and exploring other classic and contemporary science fiction anthology TV shows. You can find Anthology at anthologypod.com and anywhere podcasts are found. For book lovers, you can check out our sister site at obsessivebooknerd.com for book reviews, author spotlights, and a general celebration of reading. Finally, if you're philosophically curious, check out Tiny's side project podcast, The Secular Perspective, which explores the concepts of faith, religion, and existence from the perspective of secular hosts Chad and Amanda. You can find that at thesecularperspective.com and subscribe to the podcast on the app of your choice. Once again, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.